InDesign can be a really useful tool for prototyping your apps, be it website or iPhone, whatever it is. And you can pull images from Photoshop, you can pull illustrations from Illustrator, and it makes work. But when you push this out as an EPUB for the interactivity features, there's one huge drawback. You cannot scroll on the page. Now, this is a major problem because almost every app interface you see has scrolling at some point. So how to get around this? InDesign itself doesn't have anything natively built in because it's not technically designed for this. So you've got to use an extension. Now I've got a free one here which I want to show you and this is called Universal Scrolling Frames for InDesign by Agile Productions. If you go to the link in the description below, you can get it for free. All they ask you sign up for the newsletter, which is pretty good. So I'm gonna show you about this. So you go onto there, you sign up, it comes down in your email and what you get is some files like this. So scroll frame installed for Mac and scroll frame installed for Windows. Now, obviously, depends what system you're using. So close InDesign down, install the plugin, and then open up InDesign. So I've already gone ahead and done that. Um, it's as simple as double clicking on the icon. So here I'm in design. I'm gonna show you a bit about how to use this. So I'm gonna create a new document. So I'm gonna choose the mobile and let's go for iPhone 6. That's a good universal size. I prefer to prototype for iPhone 6 because even though the um, 6 Plus with Retina is really nice and the iPad's the large screen, the most common device your users will have is the iPhone 6, so you want it to be the best on that platform. However, in late stages of design, you might want to go ahead and design on different sizes, so the iPhone 4, the iPhone 6 Plus, and iPad Retina, to make sure that your design scales and it's good on platforms. Anyhow, I'm gonna call this prototype scroll and click OK. So the first thing I've got to do is I've got to go and create all of my content that I'm gonna be scrolling. Now, if you look at this, we've got the pasteboard around the outside. Now, what is the pasteboard? That's just with the area where things are pasted. So I've got a nice magenta swash there, which you can see quite clearly. Don't move this at the top. You see it disappears off the screen. So if I start stacking everything up, what I'm gonna find is that things that stack at the top there disappear. This is really bad for my layout, so I need to increase the size of these margins. Really easy to do. You go to InSign Preferences. If you're on a PC, you go to Edit Preferences and choose Guides and Pasteboard. So at the bottom here, you've got vertical margins. Obviously vertical is this way. Right now, it's 72 pixels, which is really good if you're just making something for the screen. You don't want things elsewhere, but I'm gonna do something a bit different. I'm gonna put this up at 2000. What this does, I click OK, it gives me a massive range, top and bottom of the page. So I can start laying things all around and it's really gonna be easy to work with. So I'm now gonna put a few items in and let's just see how that works. So file, place, and I'm already ready to put some cards in. Now I've already designed some cards for an app I'm prototyping, so let's pick just four of them. So let's choose the first four, click OK. Now I can just zoom in and just pull this out, say, about there. I'm not doing this particularly um, carefully, it's just an example but I want all the pieces to be roughly the right size. Now you can see these cards have been purposely made to be not quite tall enough so that you're gonna get a bit of peak top and bottom on the prototype when we look through, just so you see what goes on. So there we are, I've now placed my four cards on the page. I'm gonna go ahead and layer them up. So let's just put number one. Let's go how to use, number two information number three and finally legends number four right at the bottom there so let's just select there's a screen back there i want to get it off select those four go to windows object layout align make sure they're all centered so they're in line with each other make sure that they are distributed evenly right click and i want to group them and then i align to page and let's um, align the top. So what I've done now, I just use those line tools to make sure that everything's falling in the center, the spaces are equal, and it's in the middle of the page. This is exactly what I want. So I'm gonna click on this, and go edit, cut. 
So everything's gone, and so far I haven't got an app. Right, let's zoom right in. And I just get a simple rectangle frame tool. So I press F or select from the side menu and draw it out to be the same size as the whole page. Go to my selection tool. I can press V or escape. Right click, paste into. So we now see everything is back in place, but it's inside the frame. And this is a really cool thing. So I can grab the bottle handle and move right up, move right down. So far, it's not scrollable. I need to make this scrollable. So what do I do? So I go to Windows, Universal Scrolling Frames, and this dialog pops up really helpfully. They give you instructions of how to do this on the frame itself, but I'm going to talk through it anyway. Click on the frame, and you see that the side panel has now changed into a set of menus. So a scroll direction, I want to scroll vertical, and that gives you auto text. That means that when I export this, I will now be able to scroll it. This is really exciting. The last thing I've got to do is scroll indicators. I want to hide them. Now, scroll indicators are what you think they are. They're these things on the side that you can see. They are fantastic for many, many different things because it tells you where you are in the scheme. But if you think about on your iPhone or Android, you don't have scroll indicators on the phone, so you want to hide them so we don't get that um, annoying, ugly thing. It just helps with reality a lot more. So I can now close the menu and I can export. So I'm going to go to desktop, yep, EPUB fixed layout so everything stays in the right place and click save. Click all pages, that's right, and rest around the first page of the cover. You know all the stuff already. Click OK and... Um, 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 um. <laughs> Don't know why it's saying that, because it actually doesn't matter that much. Um, so obviously, if that menu comes up at JPEG and PNG, just ignore them. So I've got my um, iBooks here, and I'm just scrolling with my mouse wheel. Now, if I had a touchscreen laptop, or if I had this on my iPhone, there's going to be a link in the description about how to see eBooks on your iPhone via Dropbox. You would just scroll with your fingers, and it would work like magic. So that is it. That's as simple as it is of how to get scrolling windows working in... I, I, in design.